Time for another edition of Presbyter Chat, where your questions are answered through the prism of pre-Nicene Christianity. Now your host, Presbyter Darren Kalama. Thanks for joining us. Today's question is, was Pope Francis right when he said, every religion is a way to arrive at God? Well, first, the statement in itself is absolutist and objectivist at the same time. It's indifferentism on parade, the end result being a lukewarm solution of tasteless, liquefied theological word slurpees. It sounds like something a child might blurt out if pressed to give an answer after reading the back page of an astrology magazine. Yet within its seemingly innocent simplicity lies a very complex deception, a slippery linguistic wolf in sheep's clothing, if you will, and by the way, Bergoglio is fluent in six languages. He chose Italian when making the statement in front of a group of young students in Singapore earlier this month. The Vatican Press Office tried to get ahead of the controversy by issuing a semantically bleached version of his statement in English, but after careful study, he really did say it, and he meant every word of it. In fact, just days later, he doubled down on it and said, quote, diversity of religious identities is a gift from God, unquote. And he said that in an address to another group of students at the Tirana Med 24 conference. So this is no typo or slip of the tongue. This is reaffirmed doctrine, dogma, and belief of the Pope. Let there be no confusion as we move forward. Now, before we can answer the question, we have to ask a simple question in response. When Bergoglio says every religion is a way to arrive at God, which God is he referring to? And don't just blow this question off with a knee-jerk reaction of, what, you know God, everybody knows what God is. This question gets to the heart of Bergoglio's seemingly simple statement. Now, take a moment and think carefully. He just said the word God. No actual name for this God that he refers to. Yet here he is speaking to a non-Christian audience. The majority of people that he was speaking to in Thailand are Buddhists. Now, when you say the word God to them, it could be any one of dozens of gods, all with names I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce. But here's a few anyway. Amogasadidi. Ratna Sam Bahava, and of course, who can forget Ekaseta Heta Tisvari. In any event, these are just the Buddhist gods. Not complicated enough for you? Let's start listing all the gods of the Hindus. There's roughly 33 million gods in that pile alone. And lots of things are considered to be religions Wiccans, Satanism, Realism and the UFO worshippers, the climate cult. The Romans worshipped the sun god Sol Invictus in their religion. Even Scientology and their intergalactic ruler Xenu is defined as a religion under IRS rules. See where I'm going with this? When we apply context and reality to a statement, it's rendered meaningless, the theological slurpy of nonsense that I described earlier. And as if it was possible, he makes the statement even more meaningless by not even mentioning the name Jesus in his address to these Buddhists. There's zero context happening here. Now, if you were a Singaporean in that audience, your understanding would be that Bergoglio just gave your religion and gods the official papal seal of approval. There's no other way to interpret his statement. Now, as Christians, we're reminded that the only way to the Father is through the Son, and that means he just sent everyone in that audience down the spiritual path to the Dead Sea, a one-way trip to nowhere. Now, as Pope, Bergoglio is well aware that thousands of religions around the world worship millions of various gods and deities, all with different names. And yet, curiously, he provides no name for the God of the Catholic Church. And yet, the name that he is so unwilling to utter is written exactly 6,832 times in the Old Testament Torah books. Yet, Pope Francis will not say the name in public. Interestingly, the name is found nowhere in the New Testament. 
not even once. And since June 29th of the year 2008, by decree of the Vatican's Congregation for Divine Worship and the Discipline of the Sacraments, no Catholic is allowed to say the name either. You heard me right. You're not allowed to say the name of your own God, and neither is Bergoglio. You see, all references to the name were removed from every Catholic hymnal and liturgical guide in the world. Sound a little weird? Well, saddle up, because we're just getting started. Now, the inutterable name is Yahweh, spelled Y-A-H-W-E-H, and he's the desert war god of the Jews, and he's just one of a dozen that they worshipped at one time or another over the millennia. And since the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, you as a Catholic are also expected to worship the Yahweh deity as your god. However, as of the year 2008, you're not allowed to say the name of this deity, nor is your pope. This worshipping of the Jewish Yahweh deity caused a schism among the pre-Nicene Christians, those who wanted to staple the Jewish religion and the Yahweh deity to the front of their Bible are known as Judeo-Christians, with many denominations and subsets, including the Catholics. But those Christians who rejected the desert war god of the Jews did so with the full knowledge that Yahweh and the Jews had nothing to do with Jesus Christ and their God. In fact, they maintain that God was only revealed to us through Jesus Christ not before. Now, the pre-Nicene Christian denominations refer to God with the name Our Father, and as you would expect, He is the Father of Jesus. And again, the only way to, the only path to the Father is through the Son. In fact, you won't find anything called the Old Testament and its Torah books in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD, nor will you find the name Yahweh in it. It wasn't until hundreds of years later when the Catholic Church finally published its own version of a Bible in 382 AD that the two religions were stapled together. So how can I and the pre-Nicene Christians be so sure that the name of God is our Father and not a deity from an alien religion called Yahweh? Well, we can be sure because Jesus Christ himself tells us so. We find the first example when the apostles ask Jesus how to pray to God. You know it is the Lord's Prayer, and it's the same in the first Christian Bible, chapter 8, verse 1, and in the later Judeo-Christian Bible versions as found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13, and Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 4. Now, pay close attention to the specific name that Jesus uses, quote, and it came to pass whilst he was in a certain place praying to the Father, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When you pray, say, Father, let your Holy Spirit come upon us, hallowed be your name. Unquote. Now, did you see any Yahwehs in there? I didn't hear anything called Yahweh in there, did you? The apostles are literally asking Jesus how to address God by name and pray to him directly. And the name Jesus tells them to use is our Father, not Yahweh. Now, this is just one of many examples that illustrate an alien religion was stapled onto your edited Judeo-Christian Bible, and it partially explains why the Catholic Church is erasing the name treating it like a dirty little secret never to be spoken of, and like magic, 2,000 years of history erased from memory 16 years ago through an edict you never heard of. Still not convinced? Here's another example, and it doesn't get much more direct than this. With his last dying breath, literally his last words on the cross, what name does Jesus use for God? And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the sanctuary was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he expired. And now, with our luggage filled with context and history, 
our journey comes back full circle to the original question of the episode. Was Pope Francis right when he said, every religion is a way to arrive at God? And the answer is, who's God? And why is his statement spoken in such a way as to make God sound like a bus stop? If he's referring to Yahweh, the name of his God written 6,832 times in his Judeo-Christian Bible, we are reminded that many of the pre-Nicene Christians were of the belief that Yahweh was just another name for Satan, as we read in 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 2. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So according to this, we see Satan is a deity that operates in this earthly world. And we know that nowhere in Bergoglio's speech did he mention the name Jesus, much less preach his gospel. Now let's look at his statement again, but this time use the actual name of Bergoglio's God. Let's see how it sounds. Every religion is a way to arrive at Yahweh. Sounds a little goofy, doesn't it? A little weird? And if you're in one of the foreign audiences in Singapore hearing that, what are you thinking as a Buddhist? Well, you're definitely wondering why the Pope is trying to sell you an alien Jewish war god named Yahweh. That's for sure. It boils down to word games and deceptive marketing. Now, here's another example, a personal one, which I normally don't do, but every Christian that I know, and by the way, I'm the product of 12 years of Catholic schooling, four of those in a high school taught by brothers, including a stint as altar boy at Chicago's Holy Name Cathedral, every Christian and Catholic that I know signed up for Jesus Christ. Nobody signed up for something called a Yahweh. Nobody. Nor would they. Nobody at your local seminary signed up because of Yahweh and his alien Torah books. People come to Christianity because of Jesus, but they get sold a Yahweh on the back end, an alien deity they neither asked for nor wanted. And that's exactly why they banned the name Yahweh from all Catholic liturgy 16 years ago. They don't want you being reminded that in 325 AD at the Council of Nicaea, your religion was hijacked by Judaizers. And in 382 AD, the theft was codified with Torah books being stapled to the front of your Bible. Make no mistake, Bergoglio is a master at nuance, implied conclusions, and subtle inference using six different languages. Remember his famous, who am I to judge comment? Remember the COVID scandals and his blessing of the South American Pacamama statues at the Vatican? But with this recent statement, he's crossed a red line for many Christians. Think about it. How many Catholics, seeing no other option, has he sickened and driven out of the church and into the waiting arms of atheism? Is it all by design? I'm here to tell you there's another option. Don't accept the false choice of having to take Jesus with a Yahweh poison pill. It doesn't have to be that way. And for the first pre-Nicene Christian denominations, it wasn't. Their churches and the first Christian Bible are still among us today. If you'd like to reconnect with our Father and the faith of the first Christians when they had their own Bible, their own religion, and their own God, you can visit marcionitechurch.org and the very first Bible.org. With what's on the horizon for all of us, you'll need solid theological footing and enhanced spiritual discernment. May our Father's Holy Spirit find and guide you in these confusing times and lift the veil from your hearts and minds. I'm Darren Kalam, and we'll see you next time on Presbyter Chat. Kill them all, old and young, girls and women, and little children. Does that sound like something Jesus would ever say to you? The first Christians didn't think so either. And that's why you won't find the Old Testament in the first Christian Bible of 144 AD. Reconnect with your pre-Nicene Christian roots and the Bible you were meant to have. Ten books and the Gospel of the Lord. Download your free ebook at theveryfirstbible.org.